All right, greetings to everyone. Um, it's a beautiful day. I also understand it's public holiday for some people. So I hope uh, it's been going on well, you well rested. Uh, I think we had a detour uh, today because this, is a, this has been a reoccurring question that I've gotten a uh, couple of people in and out of uh, this class. And I felt we should start it at some point. Huh? We should start, um, start a discussion, a conversation about this topic at some point. Um, a, a bit introduction about of myself and why I think um, I can take this topic. Uh, let's see if this will start, if this will work. So yeah, this is me, uh, Taya Shobajo, um, Master Marina. I say cabin boy to captain. Uh, so those are my sea experiences. So yes, I'm clearly a seafarer. Um, presently, my superintendent and OV, OVID accredited inspector. So I have some couple of failed businesses under my belt as a seafarer. Uh, made some and lost a lot of money in the process. So I think uh, I could share a bit of my experiences on that as well. Uh, businesses I do at the moment uh, include small food. A lot, some couple of people know about it. Um, more mineral in the UK and in Nigeria. The Nigerian part is still work in progress, but uh, you can test us. Uh, the website is running, and you can buy something. I will deliver. I do have a small property portfolio as well, um, and I sit on the board of you know as advisory and boards and couple of businesses in and out of uh, Nigeria as well. So my OB is uh, getting an, uh, an LLM uh, for hobby and looking for trouble, you know, uh, as low budget bishop. So that's a bit about me and picture about what some of the things we do. So diving in straight to, um, to the first joke of the day, I saw this on uh, somewhere online and I really liked it. It said, it's when you don't have money that you think Saturdays are for washing clothes. Um, that Saturday is part of weekend there. Eh? It's not for washing clothes, but I'll use that joke later. And um, so you just, you just remember. So um, this, I, I will try to make this as interactive as possible for those that have ventured before, those that are having something successful or those that have failed at it, please let us have a discussion. Um, these are my thoughts and my opinion, and, uh, and it's not rocket science. It's not also law. You can disagree with me. You can challenge it. Uh, I'm happy to, 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 to be challenged. I don't mind. So if I, this is going to be a first question and anybody can, can answer this, please. I have some answers on the next slide, but I will also take notes so that I can update some of these, uh, the answer in future classes. So what are the challenges in running a business as a seafarer? So you're, you're on board and you're running a business. Um, anybody has this an answer or what you've heard other people talk about? You can just unmute yourself and let's have this uh, as interactive as possible. Also, don't forget, if you have a cup of uh, palm wine or something, uh, you know, please feel free. Anybody that wants to take up this first question, please. Nobody? Jake? Um, okay, I think let me just, let me break the ice. I think yeah. the major challenge is uh, not being available. Okay. Off the top of everyone's head and then uh, sometimes um, lack of knowledge of, of the business and um, also feasibility studies. But again, because you're not available, um, you almost don't have that time to go and carry out the proper feasibility studies and get all the information that is required for the business. Just my two cents uh, thoughts on this. <laughs> thanks, thanks, thanks. Uh, anybody has um, an addition to that? JJ, I think you have an answer. You have something to say about this because you asked me this question before. Huh? Are you still there? I'm using my screen, so I can. I'm sharing with my screen and this. I don't yeah. know who I'm using the building. Huh? 
Sorry, sorry to cut you. Please, will you upload this on your YouTube channel? Yeah, we will try to. We'll try to. Depends. Okay, if, so if, there's a, if there's a lot of uh, Python offering after the class, we will uh, upload it on YouTube channel. <laughs> All right, cool. No problem. All right, then. So, yeah, anybody else wants to add to that? Nobody else? Come on. We are a lot in this class now. Somebody yeah, no talk is disturbing here, sir. <laughs> okay, so what do you want to say? If you don't raise up your hand because I, I can't see who's raising up your hand. Just speak, please. Just speak. Answer. Sunday. Just speak. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Captain. Good evening. I, I think um, one of the challenges um, we have as a seafarer running a business also has to do with availability and who you, uh, who you are having on the shore base to run this business for you can also be very, very challenging. So your availability to run that business can also be a very big challenge. Okay, that's fine. Uh... Okay, please just unmute yourself. I'll try not to fiddle around with my control. Yes, uh, CC Obi, go ahead. Oh. Okay, uh, if if you're not speaking, just mute yourself. If you want to speak, please just speak. Yes, yeah, please. Go ahead. Uh, you've raised your hand, Officer Obi. Yeah. Network. Or you can type. Yes, I think. Uh, can, yeah. you, can, can you hear me? Yeah, yes. can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Can the house hear me? Okay, so that's the answers. So the second question, I think we have. Is what are the benefits of running a business as a seafarer? What do we think the benefits could be? Anybody wants to take up this? Hello, anybody wants to take this up? Yeah, please, you can just speak. I, I can't see who is raising their hands up because I'm using the screen in multiple ways now. So please just speak up, yes. Yeah, good evening, sir. Good evening. Yeah, I don't know if everyone can hear me. I believe so. so just, just try and speak. Yeah, my name is Emma. Uh, I think one of the benefits uh, as a seafarer at the point in time, I think we have to retire from the job and uh, we just do not sit at home doing nothing. But if we start the business early enough before we are retire from sea, we are something to fall back. And at time, uh, you when you work in the and duration of the contract, maybe uh, they lost the contract or the company food or something, and you have to be at home for some couple of months, and let's say two, three, even sometimes four months before you get back to work. So at least you have something doing, you have something running. Yeah, someone like me, some little business I'm doing. And I want to have the same time I have, but I want to have the same time at home because so I can fix the business I, myself, you know, make sure it grows. You know, so one of the benefits, as I say, is have something to fall back on. Not that if you are half a job from C, maybe let's say two or three months, you, the client already sending everybody a message. Hey guys, I'm too much. Let me just have 
um, book at the moment. So you have something to fall back to. You have a backup. Let me put it that way. You have a backup. Uh, right. Thank also, you. And, uh, I don't know if I make sense. No, 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 no. Perfect. Thanks. Thanks for the contribution. I appreciate that. So um, I wrote some of this down as benefits. Um, we have multiple stream of income. You have peace of mind when you are off the ship. Uh, time utilization when you are sure. I noticed that, I mean, in my experience, when you are running a business and you're at home, you don't have time to be going for unnecessary waka waka that will put you into trouble, you know? <laughs> You'll be busy. Uh, because you have something to fall back on, like Amos said, it allows you to to have a good wage negotiation. You are not desperate uh, for the contract. Uh, there's a possibility of creating employment yourself. You become an employer of labor. Uh, you can transfer equity entity to your next generation. Your children cannot inherit your COC, no matter how shiny it is. And Again, you go to sea because you love the job, eh? not because you have to go and you, you don't have money anymore. Uh, this is the point whereby, you know, that, that policy they say stop work, <laughs> stop work policy. It will be sweet to use. Uh, you will be under undue pressure uh, if I stop the work and they send me you know, all those kind of things. Uh, I don't mean stop work every time, but I mean for safety, right? And um, I will probably add a bit more from what Amos has said into the slide. So let's move on. So this is the joke, second joke for the day. That it is when you don't have a business that you will forget, you will forget that you only need one year seat time in every five years to keep your certificate valid. Uh, this is a punchline and is to, this class is not supposed to make us comfortable. Eh? It's supposed to allow us to start thinking about uh, the future that sincerely is to, for you to keep your certificate valid you only need 12 months in every five years now depend on your class or your flag state eh? please double check this information but you know you don't need to be at sea forever you know all right so i want to clarify that there's a difference between running a business and being a trader and when I say trader as well, I don't mean people that trade uh, maybe stock exchange. I'm just talking about business, goods, services. And the difference for me is that if, you're, if you must be in the business, you are the business. If you leave, the thing crumbles, then you are a trader. You're not a business person. Or if you have to leave the entity. So for example, you are a doctor and every patient wants to see you. If you're on leave, your hospital is on leave. Uh, if you are a trader and you go on holiday, by the time you come back, your, your salespeople, they've turned your shop to car park. You know, that means you, you don't really have a business, if you understand me. So you just consider that as a, being a trader. So business is an entity that can survive without your presence. So I don't know if anybody has example based on this little, if I need to, if you, if you want me to explain again, I, I can explain. Uh, so let me give an example of um, or a bank. If you go to a bank, you, the bank manager, but you don't necessarily see the owner of the bank. That's a business. Uh, most of us are on ships. The ship owners sometimes have never been on the ship before. So the ship owner, owns a business um, and you go to some supermarkets whereby there's a lot of control there and you don't see the owner. The, the supermarket is running, that's a business. And you see some big establishments that no matter what, the owner has to be there. If they want to buy something in China, the owner has to go and buy it. And it's a big establishment because there's nobody to send or nobody to trust. And all. If the owner is sick, uh, he's sick, you know, uh, you see some food shops whereby is the owner that has to be there. And you see some food shops, no. no, They have a process in place. So that's what I am, the difference between a trader and business. 
Uh, are you following me? Uh, let me know if I, uh, people can, anybody can still hear me, please. Sir. Just uh, yes. Thank you. Can you repeat that? I mean Thank something. Uh, the difference between the uh, trader and the uh, I miss the. Okay, the, you missed that. So what I mean is that if your presence is required in that entity, you are not running a business. You are a trader. Uh, I, I, it's just my own definition. I, I, I permit me to use that definition. It's not dictionary definition. Uh, I'm just trying to give us a, uh, that there are entities whereby the owner, you as the owner, if you are not there, that's the end of it. If you are sick, the business is sick. If you go on board, then the business will close shop, like most of us have witnessed as seafarers doing business. So moving on to the next slide. So which would you prefer, actually? Do you want to set up a business or you want to set up a trading? And I don't mean trading in stock. So I'm talking about based on the example I've given and the explanation. Anybody, will, which one do you want to, will you prefer to have? I think uh, run the business is the best. You, the business will be best. Anybody wants the, uh, Trading a business, running, a running a business will be best because as a seafarer, we know that you, if you are still at sea, you need, you, you need to have an entity that can operate without you, right? Now, for some of us that have ventured into something, what have we ventured into? That's the second question. Are we running yeah. a business? Have we set up a business or we set up yeah. a trading yeah. firm? That was, that's the purpose of the question number three. All right. So I, I want to go to, sorry, if you're not speaking, you can mute, please. If you're not speaking, you can mute, please, so that we don't disturb uh, everybody else. All right, so I want to put some important highlights, reality versus fantasy, I call it. Eh? You are likely going to start as a trader. Your presence will be required. However, we need to start continuously think as a business. Uh, because most of us start as traders, because uh, except in my, if you see the second point is, except you have some inheritance or some assets to some deep pockets, you might want to start small and grow. Anyway, and at that period you are, that's the tricky part for seafarers I've understood. You know, we don't go past that incubation period before the whole thing crumbles. And I hope that this session will help us to see what we can do, what we can start to do. Uh, it's not, it's not, this session is not, uh, it's not going to give you a successful business overnight, but it's going to start to, we can start this conversation. That's the purpose of this thing. Uh, I said, imagine being a pilot or a captain with no experience. We need to first understand that we might not have so much knowledge, like uh, uh, Officer Dunya said, that we don't have, some of us don't have enough knowledge about business. The fact that we are an adult and we are making money from one way or the other does not mean we know about business. Uh, it's when you try it and you get your hands burnt, then you realize that, you know, the person selling, uh, your gate man that is selling sweet and suya and has been doing it for one year, you'll be able to probably respect them. Eh? And I feel that we should always start small and grow. If you see what I wrote there, I said two things that I likely enter from the top uh, are the grave or swimming pool. Uh, you know what happens to the grave. And swimming pool, you require a lot of skills to be able to remain at the top. Okay, uh, let's go to the next slide. So business structure, um, this is very important. When I learned about this, I personally started business 2010 um, and I started as a trader. And in the first slide, I've tried to explain what I do now and where, where I am with, as regards business. I've noticed that a lot of people are so focused on the products that they want to sell. Product can be goods or service. So somebody says, I sell shoes. Okay, fine. 
because you know they love the shoes. Or maybe in my case, I say I sell makeup. Or somebody says I, you know, I give a service of IT service or something or whatever. Or somebody says I have a farm. I'm into farming. I'm into cars. I'm into different things. And we are so focused on the product that we miss out building business. So I got this uh, picture a couple of years ago, almost a decade ago, and talks about that, you know, it looks like this fire triangle. Most of us will understand fire triangle, right? From our time at uh, fire school. And it's similar thing. I want you to, if you can see my screen, you see that the product section is at the top here, but it looks like the smallest. Some, some experts believe that the product is more or less to be the least important thing in your business. And in my interactions with a couple of seafarers, myself included earlier on, we are <laughs> fixated on the product. Uh, if you understand what I mean. So let's quickly run through this. That for you to have a successful business, you probably need the, this triangle that you can see here. These are the key triangles. If you don't have any of them, your business is likely going to fail. And if you see in these three triangles, there's nothing like product in it, in these major three triangles. The mission is your reason for existing, your why. Why? Why are you even in business? Leadership is your vision, result. Sometimes you don't uh, even have the leadership. You might have to go and look for the leadership. Basically, now the structure in which you put your business uh, as a business or a trader is it going to be big? Is it going to be small? Your own example that would be the leadership part. Then the team, who and who, and are, are they better than you, or you getting people that you are better than? So those three things, if you put them on any product, your business is likely going to strike. But most of us, we look at the product and we forget those other parts. And when you talk about, you see that the first question is why we don't do it. We see that we don't, people we don't trust, reliable, we're not there. Then you can see that there's something about team. Team is broken. So when you remove that triangle, like your fire triangle, oxygen, <laughs> then that is gone. Now, um, for sake of time, I'll run through this quickly and hopefully you can take some questions later. Again, as I mentioned, this is more like an introduction to open our eyes to it. And I'm very happy if anybody doesn't feel this is right and they would like to challenge it, I don't mind as well. So let's go inside this triangle. The most important thing is cash flow, the oxygen. Where is the, where is the funding coming from for this venture? What is left over? So you are a seafarer, you have some money, that's some cash flow to inject into the business. That's fine. If that stops, is there any other backup? Communication is what you tell your team and what you tell the world. This is where all those things about maybe your PR, your social media, and, I, and all those things are key. So somebody tells me, I want to do a business, blah, blah, blah. And I say, have you, have you thought about the name? Yes. Have, have you registered the name on, your so, on all the social media platforms? Uh, do you, have you checked that that's your brand is available on? Can you even get the username? So I give you two examples. So we have more mineral UK, and I cannot get more mineral on Instagram because somebody has got more mineral on Instagram and it's not doing anything about it. So the person is waiting for me to come and buy that brand from them. Just an example. Uh, system, system, a body. If you look at the body. We have different systems, digestive system, this system, XYZ system, reproductive system. You know, that one is going on so much on the social media now. Some people are fighting it's because of the reproductive system and all different systems. So there are going to be a lot of systems in your business. And that is the key, one of the key business differences between a business and trading. So let's use the ship as an example. The ship order is not on board, but every night they are sending uh, midnight report. That is a system in place by the ship owner through their safety management system. Have you seen it? Can you link it up? The ship owner is not there, but they want to see how you are maintaining the vessel. So
So they have something called the plan management system or plan maintenance system. Can you feel that? So we have all those systems in place on the ship. And the only thing I can say is that we need to start thinking of how to break that and multi put that into our own businesses ashore as well. So what system do you need to have in your, in your organization, in your either small or big that you are doing? Do you need to have a plant maintenance system yourself? Do you need to have a safety management system? I've seen restaurants that have safety management system. You won't believe it. They measure if there's a glass broken down. They have a policy for this, just the way you have policies on the ship. They have policies as well. You know, this is not, and that policy can be moved. So if you look at the ship, for example, they have one policy and they move it from ship to ship. So if you remove an SMS from a ship, you know that, that, that you don't, that goes with the FA, FNC, that goes with the DOC, then you don't really have a trading ship sort of anymore. So is the ship owner builds one safety management system and tries to multiply it on different ships and adjust it accordingly. So if they have a FPSO, uh, they will have something to fit that. If they have a PSD, they have something, if they have an LNG, they have something to fit that. So it's really the, SMS, that is a company in most times. All right. Legal. I said, don't expect the law to respect you. You have to be the one to respect the law. Um, for example, I would think, can you really have a car park where there's no drainage? Yes, you can, but maybe in this part of the world. But normally, should you? If you understand what I mean. Uh, stay within the law. And I mean local in the sense that you have to think globally and locally, locally relevant, Glo local thinking. This is a, a new concept, if, especially if you're going to be trading internationally. All right, so legal part is very key. Legal part for a business will be uh, your business formation. Are you registering as a limited liability company or as a self-employed? Or, or what, partnership. Uh, is my brother, is my sister, it's own last in business. What is the legal structure? Do you have any agreements that you want to put in place from day one? And uh, these things are not things you use sense to do. It's things that you really have to um, <laughs> meet the experts. And uh, yeah, you might have to pay somebody to drop you draft something, but those things, uh, business expenses that you can write off as a business expense. But if you don't do it, it can hook you up in future. You are going to be away at sea. The person on land will make a decision <laughs> and they will just, you receive a phone call that they've sold your company or something has happened. Uh, you know, and these things happen again and again and again. So the legal part, don't leave it. Huh? Registration, you have to do it. For let me give you an example. So we are in more mineral. We do manufacturing of uh, makeup products and food products in more foods. But we cannot just start selling. We need to make sure that all the requirements, legal requirements for us to sell are done. Any country we want to go. The way it is in Nigeria, we have to face NAVDAC. It's the same way it is in the United Kingdom. You have to face your own regulator and regulatory bodies. If you have to go to Ghana, you have to face it. So you have to know that you have to do those things or else you cannot successfully run a business. They will clamp you down and they will close you straight in a very serious country. Now, the least <laughs> part of it is the product. Because if you have done all these things I've talked uh, in the, uh, above, you can put any product into it. So personally, I don't have a passion for any product. I, like, I have a passion for selling things, anything it is, um, and making things work. And if we agree on something, then we have to do it. That's my own kind of passion. So it doesn't matter what I'm selling. If I'm selling underwears, or I'm selling softwares, or I'm selling makeup, I, I do makeup anyway. A lot of people might know I'm a very good makeup artist. To sell, <laughs> you know, um, if I'm selling food, and if I'm selling a ship management service, it doesn't matter. As long as I have every other thing above ready, I can fit a product into it. So one of the things I want us to take away from here is this. The product 
that a lot of us are romancing is, is almost the least important thing in building a successful business. I don't say it is not there. Yeah, people need a product, blah, blah, blah. Yes, fine. But if you, okay, let me put it this way. Um, which who is the, okay, KFC. KFC is making, or Burger Kings, or those are more Burger King. Burger Kings are making billions from burger. But well, a lot of people can make better burger. Why are they not, make, why are they not making billions? It's because Burger King has everything else. And they can put any product and people will buy it, you know, and all that. So, you know, so anyway, uh, let's move on. We have very short time to do this. So these are some of the bad habits of seafarers in business that I have observed over time. Because we probably have access to some funds, and you know we are being hailed, oh, capo capo, engineer, engineer. You know, like one day I went to uh, worry stop point. You sure you understand? You know, next those that know that place, they are our customer. And I saw one of my babies, and he was you know with a big thing, and they were, they were calling him capo capo capo, and I was like ah ah, yeah, wow, okay. But anyway, we carry that kind of habit to business as well. So we start big when we want to do farm. We don't want to start with one plot or two plots, or something we've not done before. We want to start with six acres. We want to get tractor. Uh, then when it becomes time to do the weeding, then we realize that there's no boys in the area to do weeding. All of them have gone to Lagos to drive Okada. You know, <laughs> so that is a big one. We can sabi rush. Hey, sailors can rush. They want to do it now. I just come down. I'm going back to see next week. I'm going back to see two weeks. I, you know, as a result, we don't even have time to negotiate <laughs> what people on land are getting for two thousand naira because you are rushing. You buy three thousand to you. It doesn't mean no problem, no problem, no problem. I want to quickly do it now. But in the long, when you add it together, you've lost a lot of money. Now I've mentioned this before. We love, we romance the product. You know, ah, pharmacy, pharmacy, pharmacy. You're not the one using drugs now. What's your problem? Uh, you know, I like this, I have this thing, the shoe, I have this, I like that, the shirt, I like this, I like that. You romance the product, but we hate the business. You know, that is the key to do it. Another thing I've noticed that we involve incompetent relatives in key business rules and decisions. It's my brother, it's my sister, uh, my uncle, my auntie. Sorry guys, I think my network went off again, but um, we are back. So where were we on our slides? We're almost done though. Uh, sorry. There's something about network, but we're probably going to just manage it. Okay, so guys, can you please hear me? Can you hear me? Anybody just give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. Yeah, we can hear you. I can hear you, Captain. All right, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, thank you. So um, I was talking about the bad habits that we we do. So this incompetent relatives that we involve in cure, because maybe out of trust, we think we trust them. A lot of seafarers I've seen that have gone into business and in probably a year or two, they're back on the ships full time and they'll swear never to do business again, add dealings with relatives. Eh? <laughs> the money went, uh, short story, you know? Uh, immature resignation from C. You know, you have a lot of responsibility and you just leave C as if you have seen the light. Uh, you starve your cash flow. Remember, cash flow is king. When, when, we, are, when we are on time off, we hang out with only seafarers on time off. You know, uh, the blind cannot lead the blind. I don't mean you don't hang out with seafarers, but you need to build network. Okay? Um, then we don't learn enough about business. It is something I've noticed that we don't do enough. <laughs> this, this part, I mentioned about it in the legal set. We do a lot of investments in Ponzi schemes. 
Now, this is a quick one. I have to just chip it in. I try not to be involved. I've seen a lot of people do this. Uh, which one was that? Uh, apart from the MMM, another one went again last year, November, December. And sometimes I see the guys on the ship. They were telling me, ah, Kapo, they don't pay, they don't pay. Guys, you need to understand the law. Let me, let me brief you. If there are more than 50 investors in a particular business, you have to go public. So when you are seeing that people are putting money in something and they're just putting money, they're just putting money. And a lot of people, what's the decent one? Somebody should remind, remind me now. Which one was the one that went off uh, last? MBA. MBA for it. MBA for it. Uh -huh. And things like that. Is it a public company? No. Is it a cooperative? Because in our laws, we are set cooperative because it's part of our culture. But if it's not, they have to be sure. Is it a public company? Or else SEC will come. The EFCC will come because you are breaking the law of the land. Don't expect the law to respect you because you are 1,000 people investing. No, you've broken the law, you've broken the law. Okay? Uh, I won't say too much uh, on this. Then I see if I have, they like to be shalaying, go, you know, you just be shalaying, shalaying, and, and nothing is happening. Okay? So, Let's go to the next one. Good habits that I think we need to do. Okay? We need to start this now. We need to sharpen our saw. Uh, most times, it's like building a house. You don't just, if they allow a seafarer, you just bring money now. And say, yeah, put the pillar here. Put the pillar there. We are erect this place. You know, <laughs> it doesn't make sense. What I'm saying now doesn't make sense because you think I want to be the house. No, I must first get the land. Is the land, go and check the land from the land registry. Is it clear of government acquisition? Is it this? Is it that? Okay, is it, uh, what is the topography? What is the water in the area? What can I build on it? You, you know, you meet an architect. You, okay, the architect, you, you go and get planning, approval. You know, you get survey. You do this. You want to invest, protect your property in the future. You do C of O. You know, all those things. It's the same thing we have to do when we are talking about our business. We have to think it through properly. And we, we have an opportunity that I think a lot of seafarers don't, don't know you have. You see, when you're on time off, uh, when you're off the, your watch, that 12 hours or some people even have 16 hours off every day, that's some valuable time to think about your business, to think about the structure, to think about the mission, why do you want to do it, to think about the leadership, you know, the team, put it in place. Start making phone calls, you, you know, build the business before you start spending money or wasting money. Of course, you're still going to spend money, but at least do all the, uh, I call it deep work. That, you know, there are some things that are shallow work, but unfortunately, a lot of people like to do shallow works. Do the deep work while on your, on your bed, you know, you are away from distraction. You are the only one that can call people. In short, sure, seafarers are the ones calling people and causing trouble. You that are supposed to tell them that you're out of network area. But, you know, build business networks. You know, keep in mind the difference between business and traders, though. So meet somebody that asks what you want. Ask questions. Don't be shy. They ask, they ask the thing they will probably say is no, they don't have time. But, you know, if you're looking for something, you can't be shy. You can't be embarrassed, really. Build network. Ask somebody. Most business people that I know, eh, they might not have time, but they're happy to help you if you ask them the right question. They will say, "Oh, this is what this X Y Z." Business people are very, very. They are not like, um, uh, uh, you know, employees are competitive. They want to protect their job. Business people want to sell more of their job. So, in short, if you want to buy more and help them instead, they don't mind. All right. Now, a key part is. The, you know, in our in the, in rules of the road, there's a part that talks about characteristics, efficiency, and limitation of radar equipment. I like that part because even as human beings, we have our own characteristics, efficiency, and limitation. You need to know your own limitation, so you can ask questions towards that. That will help you to know the people to build your so your, your business with. I've received a lot of questions and questions from oh, how can I get COC in this country? Blah blah blah. It's the same thing that we have to do for our businesses as well. Start asking questions. You know, it doesn't matter your, your product. You might not be in the same line of product, but the principles of business is the same. I've explained to you that we can always put that business principle on any product, anyway. Uh, don't be em emotional about incompetent relatives in your business. This is uh, key. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't know how to, better way to, 
put it down. But if the person does not know, if they don't know, uh, is my son, is my daughter, is my uncle, is my brother, they don't, you yourself, you don't know. How do you expect them to know? They will not be saying that person is supposed to know. Supposed to know what? You know, log your activities. This is very important. Eh? Um, because I'm in a makeup food business whereby we work strictly with um, formulas and recipes. Uh, just imagine the ladies in the house will probably understand it that you buy a lipstick today, a particular shade, and you like it, and you go back and buy the same shade and it's different. You know, you don't like it, or you, you use your makeup and it's different next time you buy it. You want that consistency. Some businesses require consistency, but the pen and the paper is what we need to always log out our activities. You can always go back to it, keep records, write it down. Then sometimes you might, if you don't have anybody that is competent, you might have to train someone. There's nothing wrong in you training people too. You know, they train you, train someone as well. The issue about training is very delicate. You think if I train the person and the person runs away or move to another company, you know, I'm going to do something else. Okay, what if you don't train the person and the person stay in your company? You know, what do you want? Um, then again, we need to be calming down. You know, the way we do it in uh, Papa Port, Kistin Joe or, you know, Wazobia or, you know, in all those other places, we need to be calming down and, you know, start small, think big, smart. Okay. Next slide. I would like to round up quickly with this assignment from today's class. Irrespective of a business, I'll put the product section down. I want us to complete this session. If you really know you want to do business, this is deep work. It's not shallow work. Deep work. Complete below for your business. What's the mission that you want to have for the business? What's the leadership? If you you can also look at other businesses around you, uh, shipping, outside shipping, and you can even try and ask people that are running those businesses and say, what is the mission of this business? Can I see the leadership structure? Quickly, you see them. You see that, okay, they have a CEO, they have this, this, this. It doesn't have to be as grand, all right? You don't, you're not competing with a 70-year-old company or 50-year-old company, but you want to have something that, you know, that you can see as leadership, as a team. You want to have a team quickly. You are not a lawyer, for example. Do you need, uh, even if you don't have the lawyer in retainership, but at least have a lawyer friend. Once in a while, carry him to worry stop point, make you drink on top of your head. Next morning, when he's still on hangover, ask him a legal question. I'm just joking anyway. But, you know, <laughs> build a team. Think about cash flow. Where is the money going to come from? I'll, you know, stay, stay on your job. There's nothing wrong in you being a, being employed or being a seafarer, no. I mean, I decided to retire from sea about three, four years ago, and I made sure that I just go to sea 12 months every five years to keep my uh, certificate valid. You know, why not? I enjoy it. I meet cadets, I disturb cadets, I make sure they read the rules of the road. You know, I became a trouble on the ship. Second officer herself, who are also part of it, you know, they will bring out sex time. I was just catching crews because I enjoy it, you know. Um, your communication, that's why you start thinking about your communication thing. Uh, it's not going to be perfect in one day. You realize, oh, what am I going to do? How do I do PR? How do I, it, just to do a label on a product is not as easy, all right? But you have to start putting all that in place. The systems, start building your SMS. You've seen your own SMS, personal SMS. For those on our COC group, I've shared the SMS of our food shop. It's a takeaway shop, but the SMS is probably um, maybe 100, 150 pages of different policies, you know, guiding our activities. So yeah, you know, uh, the second food shop, similar. Third food shop will have the same thing, you know, and you can, you can multiply with those policies. Your ingredients will be the same. You know, and you can just keep testing it as you go. Think about a legal structure, you know. What do you want to do? Do you know the difference between limited liability company and a sole trader, for example, or self-employed? What is the risk involved in those two things, for example? We do not bring this thing from heaven, and we did not learn it in school, except maybe you went to a business school. So start asking questions. Then what's the product that you really like? Some people is into clothing, some people is into food, some people is into different things, you know? So um, 
what that will be the last part of it. If you complete this, um, you can share with me if you want to, and you can actually do a live presentation of your business idea to everybody in the in the class. To everybody in the class, and they can learn from it. They can criticize it. They can contribute to it as well. Okay. And uh, some people will say, "I don't want people to steal my idea." That for me, it's rubbish. I don't mind anybody stealing my idea. It's execution that is the major thing. Can you execute the idea? You know, um, that's major for me. And it should be a good form of advert when you do that. Okay. Um, the end from the low budget bishop. I hope today's class has been fine. I don't know if anybody has a question. Let me um, let me get back to our participant and see if anybody has a contribution. If you again for you, you don't yeah please go ahead, Connie. Of second, go ahead. Okay, I think my own is more um, along the lines of uh, a contribution. And uh, uh, last time I joined um, our governance, ethics, and compliance team in the company. And uh, part of our duties is to uh, carry out due diligence for people interested in doing business with the company. And it was a big aha moment for me because. In our day-to-day -day lives, we uh, dabble around with people, you know, with our money. And the big question will always be, how much of that do you know? You know, and I think I also reflected as an individual too, if um, they put light on you, what would they see? So um, just an add-on to uh, what you said, if you're going into business with people, it's very important to carry out due diligence, proper one, touch the person up and down, you know, um, get references and all of that. Very, very key because the, a person's character cannot hide. If the person uh, maybe is approaching you just to do, the person would have reduced it's very unlikely that you will be the first person. So when you carry out your due diligence, there's a chance that you will find that one out and you will be safe. And also for us, for you also as an individual, it's also good to keep, uh, to have a good character outside. Now you're not doing it for somebody else, but you're doing it for yourself. And you're also doing it for the future because uh, you might start a business, it will grow and somebody wants to buy it or buy into it, you know, which if you look at the world in Nigeria today, that's what's happening. But if the person carries out a search on you, what would the person find? You know, and I think um, it's uh, information that is not necessarily out there or knowledge that is not out there. So I thought I should share it with us here. Due diligence is uh, very important in business. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for this. Um, I, I would add that sometimes uh, in small businesses, we feel that um, I don't want to spend money on X, Y, Z now. It's going to cost me money. I can just be smart about it once. That money you spend is a business expense. I said, record it. You can claim it back on your expense. But if you don't spend it and it becomes a big issue for you in future, you probably spend more. So if you don't spend money to know the difference between a sole trader and uh, limited liability, and you go and register for the wrong one, and you get into a court case or whatever, and you are in the wrong sector, you will now spend more money in future. So yes, thanks so much, uh, Mr. Kony, for, for that due diligence. <laughs> That's going to be part of the team, uh, building a team. If we should, maybe we should do due diligence on our on our relatives that we had into our businesses <laughs> all right next person please all right uh, the, uh captain uh, good evening good evening sir yeah i think uh, one of the things uh, is going to be a contribution the salient point i i want to underline in your presentation is that ability to start small Start being small, small, you are going to set them. 
And another point again, I want to underline again is the, the blueprint. If you have a, a, a proper plan, any product can, can touch it. So that is a very big uh, 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 point I would, I would want to emphasize. So, and it's also for me, it's something that uh, I tell people about every day. So thank you very much for this training. Uh, we we'll, we'll look forward to inviting you for business presentation. <laughs> thank you very, thank you very much, boss. I always appreciate that. I appreciate that. Thank you, thank you. Uh, N A. N A. Good, uh, good evening. Good evening. Yeah. Good evening, Captain. Yes. Good evening. Go ahead, sir. Yeah. Good evening, House. Um, this is J J. Oh, J J. Go ahead. That was has been dealing with me. Okay. Yeah. Uh, my own contribution. Yes. Uh, my own contribution to, to this um, briefly is uh, what I learned over time. I learned something from a big entrepreneur that's on your code. They said no matter how sweet the business look like, no matter how promising it is, that it is never advisable for you to invest your total capital in a particular business at a time. Because a point will ever come whereby you need to be servicing the business that you just invest to. So he is talking about 60% maximum of the total capital for you to invest into a business. Now, for you to invest 100% and you are not looking for money to service that, that's always run the business now. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you very much, JJ. I try to stay away from numbers uh, so that people don't quote me and say, oh, this is the amount you should invest or not. Uh, I feel people are adult enough. If you make mistake and you invest 100 this time and it didn't work, next time you um, realize that maybe you should have some. But of course, this is about risk taking. Uh, if you are single and you are taking a risk, it's different from when you are married and when you have children and you are taking a risk. <laughs> okay, so I would say we should be guided on on on, on taking risk. Uh, venture is a risk. Not taking risk is a risk as well. So, you know, guide based on your intuition. Some people like me, I would invest 100%, you know, and I will stand by it. Uh, and it can be stupid sometimes, you know, <laughs> like I said in the beginning, uh, you know, we've lost some amount of money doing that, you know, when we were younger. We like do 100% now, maybe not, you know, I realized that Claire Maria, you know, <laughs> I need to be able to provide food for tomorrow. So yeah, so uh, that, that's that's very valid. Thanks for that. Na, I think is Na or anybody else. Uh, Na, anybody else has a contribution or a question before we round off the class? And as the class being of any use, of any benefit to anybody as well uh, in today's session, has today's session been of any benefit? I said the class is of immense benefit. It's really benefit. We really benefited. Thanks. Thanks for that. Thanks for that. Yeah. Um, somebody was saying something. I didn't get the. Okay. Yeah, um, I, I, I... Is, I actually wanted to say that uh, seafarers uh, out there, they need a lot of this knowledge. I think uh, this topic should go further than this, because a lot of people really need this. A lot of guys, especially in these difficult times that uh, people, can't, people can't get the kind of jobs they want. Hmm. So it's, it's a very... Okay, thanks for that. Thank you, I appreciate that. We, that's why we have this session. Um, maybe we'll look for how to make it more practical. We can use real life examples of businesses. Anybody with, anybody has an idea, send to us. We can um, switch it, we'll make it anonymous and we can try something. And we can, we can be our own shark pants. Eh? I think. Yeah, so this, uh, there's a question in the chat that says, um, 
how can you advise a seafarer that wants to invest in other people's business? Okay. Um, f first thing I talk about when seafarers want to invest in business, uh, we can talk about investment in the future, but I'm always of the opinion that first invest in yourself, invest in knowledge, uh, because I realize that uh, a fool and his money, as long as they are on one way, they are fine. But when they get to T-junction, fool will go one way, money will go one way. And I've also learned that uh, if you have money and you don't have knowledge, and you invest with somebody that has knowledge and doesn't have money, at the end of that transaction, it will swap. The one with money will end up with knowledge, and the one with knowledge will end up with the money. You know? Um, <laughs> so, you know, I, I cannot say don't, but I have to say you have to first invest in yourself, understand what you want to put your money in, understand that there's a risk involved in it, um, like Officer Kony doing your said, do due diligence on it as well, uh, you know, and don't just jump into the with both fruits. Don't jump into the water. Don't test water with both fruits. Uh, is my friend? Is my friend? Uh, <laughs> I don't know about that. So, you know, I wouldn't do such a thing. So partnership business again. It's about it's about the legal structure has to be in fact put everything. Yeah, you know, why are we doing this thing? Uh, what's the mission surrounding it? Where's the leadership coming from? If you are doing partnership, is it coming from you? Are you partnership because of just money or your partnership with ideas or your partnership on what? You know, define every relationship very well, uh, just like marriage, because, uh, you know, we've had silly stories from business partnership. People have killed themselves because of business that is not even profitable. One person thinks it's a lot of money and, and there's really nothing in it and they kill themselves. Eh? So uh, I don't have a problem with partnership, but you know, two cannot work except they agree, kind of. But at the same time, break it down. And this might, um, if you have a question, you can put it in the chat. If you're having network issues, so I can pick it up. We're going to round up in another two minutes or so, so that we keep to our time. Uh, again, as I said, this is just an introduction to it, to see the test the appetite of people. Is this something that is actually even needed? Uh, is this knowledge needed? Uh, what else do people want to do? We have not broken any. So again, as I said, the product doesn't matter. So please uh, use this information judiciously. Okay. Um, I don't know if you have any question again, or we should be rounding off in a minute. So let me stop sharing. So do, do we need um, this written down in the group or have we written it down? So I can, this assignment, or it will be on, uh, it's gonna be on our YouTube channel anyway. So if you want, you can pause it and you can write it down and can start. If you have any questions about it or you develop something, you want somebody to have a look at it, just send it to me. Uh, if I don't reply, buzz me again, reminder, and we can tweet it together. Uh, so to your sources and to everybody's sources, like Captain Sources, I greet everybody. Yeah? Thanks for coming. It's uh, wonderful. And it's a pleasure seeing everyone today. Have a nice day. Uh, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank, uh, you, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Captain. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Captain. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you so much, Captain. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, you so, much. so much. I appreciate it. Let me stop the recording.